Top five essential safety items that weren't around in the 1960s and 70s. Number five, childproof caps on dangerous products. Accidental poisoning was a huge problem back then. Parents weren't as attentive as they are now, and kids would sometimes accidentally drink something poisonous. Household cleaners such as ammonia, bleach, and drain cleaner had no childproof caps. Same with aspirin and other medications. Kids died at a rate of more than one per day nationwide, and those numbers were probably much higher, but information wasn't coordinated and shared in the days before computers. Pediatricians in those days reported that the number one injury to kids under five years old was accidental poisoning. The Poison Prevention Packaging Act of 1970, signed into law by Richard M. Nixon, reduced accidental deaths by 45%. Number four, seat belts. Safety belts were invented in 1895, but didn't become standard equipment in cars until the seat belt law of 1968. People didn't use seat belts much because there were no laws enforcing seat belt use until 1984. Arguments against seat belt use were the belts were uncomfortable because the shoulder belt caused constant pressure on the upper body. This was eventually fixed by clever engineering, but Ford and General Motors lobbied Congress for years to prevent seat belts and airbags from becoming mandatory. Another argument against seat belt use was that people thought that if a car caught fire after a crash and the seat belt had been damaged and wouldn't open, they would be burned alive. Cars in general were not engineered with crash safety in mind until Ralph Nader wrote a best-selling book called Unsafe at Any Speed, which pointed out how the occupants of the Corvair would fare in a crash. The public started demanding that safety become a priority in car design, laws were enacted, and safety improved. Number three, 911. In the years before 911, if you had an emergency, telephone technology was a big problem. You had to look up the appropriate phone number for police, fire, or ambulance service in the phone book. Then you had to dial it, usually with a rotary phone, or you could do what they did in old movies. Call the local operator, and when she answered, say, Operator, get me the police. By 1968, the emergency responders, such as police and fire agencies, had pushed Congress to adapt a national number and settled on 911. Number two. Drunk driving laws were ignored. Until Mothers Against Drunk Driving, DUI laws were enforced sporadically. Cops were known for letting people continue driving if pulled over for displays of intoxication. They would usually make them pour out their booze on the side of the road and let them go. Repeat offenders could be caught drunk driving many times, and judges would slap them on the wrist. In 1980, mothers of children killed by drunk drivers united and pressured those in the legal system to enforce the laws already written and tighten up laws that allowed offenders to repeat, and things began to change. Back then, you had to be twice as drunk to get busted. Drunk driving was considered to be a blood alcohol level of 0.15, and now it's 0.08. When those in the legal system discovered that enforcing the laws was lucrative and politically popular, enforcement increased and drunk driving was reduced. MAD says that drunk driving has been reduced by half since their founding. Number one, airline security. There wasn't any. Until 1973, the FAA didn't require passengers to be screened or searched. No ID was required. There were no metal detectors, no luggage x-rays. You just got on the plane. Security was implemented when planes started getting hijacked at alarming rates. Thanks, D.B. Cooper. There weren't terrorists like today, but there were crazy people. One man put a bomb in his mother's luggage which blew up mid-flight, killing all 43 people aboard. He confessed he did it for the life insurance money. You could also smoke on the plane. There are still ashtrays in the armrests of some commercial airplanes. Here's a question for you. Take our poll and voice your opinion. Smoking was allowed almost everywhere back then, in restaurants, stores, boarding events, even on airplanes and in hospitals. Should unrestricted smoking have made our top five list? And check out my channel for more videos. Click like and share and subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching.